It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. I won't say that again. It is so good to be in the house of the Lord. Are y'all here? Y'all make some noise. Clap your hand or something here. We thank God for his goodness. Others are coming in. We got a few that have run a little late because we discovered we had a problem with the church band. And it's supposed to be several individuals that are going to come. And so uh, we, we're just so delighted that you're here and others will be joining us soon. But we're going to go ahead and get started. Uh, we're kind of working on a little handicap today because part of the praise team is not going to be with us. And so we're going to do our best. Y'all say amen. amen. We're going to do our best even under the handicap because listen, listen. The scripture said, let everything that have breath praise you the Lord. And I'm looking at folks who are physically alive in here. Am I right about that? Y'all ought to say something if you're alive. Am I right about that? Amen. 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 So if you're not dead physically, I want you to clap your hand. When it's time to clap your hand, I want you to sing. They're going to sing some more traditional songs on today. I want, you to, I want you to open your mouth and I want you to sing and join in with these individuals that are here on today at the choir stand. Come on, let's, let's sing a little something here and then we're going to have prayer. Has the Lord been good to you? Yes. Oh, I always start off with the question, has God been good to you? Because we need to realize and not take it for granted that the Lord woke us up this morning. You didn't just get up because the alarm clock went off. But you got up because the Lord said live. Yes. And so we have to recognize God for his mercy and his blessings toward us. I want you to do something for me for one minute. I want you to take a deep breath. You know what that proved? You have the ability to breathe. You know how much of a blessing it is to breathe? Yeah. Especially in a pandemic that has snatched away the breath of so many people. Yeah. They have required breathing machines just to breathe. Yeah. But God said, Barbara, you breathe. God said, Sherry, you breathe. He said, Cajunique, breathe. So I don't know about you, but I've realized what a blessing it is just to be able to breathe. Come on, somebody, give God a praise. He's worthy of the praise. So let's stand to our feet and bless the Lord in the, in the words of these songs. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord.
was when God gave him the victory. Yes. And David praised the Lord with all his might. He realized how good God was. I don't know about you, but God has been good to you. You are blessed if you have the ability to move your limbs, the ability to raise your arms. Come on, saints, we owe God a praise. We owe him a praise. I just got some disturbing news. But you are yet alive. You're yet doing well. You have not been given tragic news. So I want you to take this opportunity to bless the Lord. I just want to bless you, Lord. situation. Somebody came in with a problem. Somebody came in perhaps even sick. God, I pray for your deliverance. I pray for your healing. Lay your hand on us, God. Somebody tell them, Lord, lay your hand on me. Come on, talk to them. Tell them, Lord, lay your hand on me. You know my situation. You know where I am. You know where I, what, how I feel. Help me, Lord. Lift your hand and tell him, help me, Lord. Come on, tell him, help me, Lord. I need your help. I need your strength. I need your power. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. We call on you. There's power in your name. There is deliverance in your name. Jesus. Somebody call this name right now. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We call on you. Yes, we do, Lord. My Savior. Jesus, my healer. Jesus, my everything. God, move in our midst today. Let, oh God, those that are bound, let them be set free. Save today. Lord, save, 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 God. Deliver from sin. Break every yoke. In the name of Jesus, we come against you, Satan. We come against you now. And we command you to take your hands off. In the name of Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Victory is in you. It is in your name. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. 
God, I pray that you would heal them. That you heal the sick that are among us. Huh? That you heal those that are on our prayer list. Huh? God, certainly we're praying that you would heal those uh, who have been stricken with this COVID-19 virus. Huh? Oh, my God. Huh? Deliver now, God. Huh? Those in hospital rooms. Huh? Those that are in their own homes. Huh? God, deliver. Huh? Let the miracle take place today. Huh? I know you're able. Huh? I know you can. Huh? In the name of Jesus. Huh? Then Lord, there are those that are bereaved. Huh? Touch right now, God. Huh? Those that are crying this morning. Huh? Those that are suffering from the loss of a loved one. Huh? Lord, that family, oh God, that buried the, their child yesterday. Huh? Help them right now, God. Huh? Give them comfort, Lord. Huh? Yes, Lord. Huh? The bad news that occurred this morning. Huh? Look on choice, God. Huh? And touch her now. Huh? Touch the family, Lord. Huh? It's a tragedy, God. Huh? But God, you know how to comfort. Huh? You know how to help, Lord. Huh? In the time of a bereavement. Huh? We seek you, God. Huh? We seek you now. Huh? That you will touch, God. Huh? That you will bless. Huh? In the name of Jesus. Huh? Help me sing in the name of Jesus. Huh? I need y'all to help me to pray. Come on, somebody. Huh? In the name of Jesus. Huh? Oh, God. Oh, God. I'm looking to you. I'm seeking you now. Yes, Lord. Tell him yes, Lord. Come on, tell him yes, Lord. Yes to your way. Yes to your will. Yes to your word. God, we love you. God, we praise you. God, we adore you. I ask that you will lead us in these services. Guide us, oh God. And Lord, we shall ever give your name the praise. And the glory of the honor belongs to you. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Clap your hands. Come on. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. I want you to sing with a little bit. I know this song is in order this morning. Come on and just help them. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. Need your help. Need your help.
wants to touch you right now. He yeah. wants to meet yeah. you where you are. We came here to praise God, but we also came here to receive a touch from the Lord. And whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, because I feel the heaviness, I see it in the eyes of some individual, lift your hand again and say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Come on, I, I want you to really, really just let go. And come on and say, help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. I need your help. I need you. I need your help. Yes, Lord, I need your help. Lord, I need your help. Now tell the Lord, thank you. Tell the Lord, thank you. Open your mouth and tell him, thank you. Lord, we thank you. Thank you. Oh, Lord. Thank you. Tell God, thank you. Tell God, thank you. Hallelujah. Oh, bless the Lord. You may be seated. The praise team is going to sing a little something for us. And then we're going to turn it over to the hands of Sister Sherry Fox. For this is a little special day. And I'll let her talk about that. But listen, listen. I know we got some people that are absent. Amen. And, and, and it may seem like it's a little different. And there's some things that are going on. There's some things that have hurt the hearts of individuals. But I want you to just let go. Let the Lord have his way. Come on, y'all. Y'all say amen. Amen. Let the Lord have his way. I want to mention, thank God for these children. Come on, clap your hands for these children. They got some other family members that are, that are coming in. These children were at the funeral yesterday. And it's right for them to be at church today. This is the place to be. Amen. This is the place to come. To be in church and to be in the presence of the Lord. Amen. I, I told y'all we need to tell the Lord to help us because we need help y'all. And I want y'all to get in the praise service. Let's praise God together. Come on, praise team. They're going to give us a little selection here. And then Sister Sherry Fox is coming. Say amen again, everybody. Ain't nobody do me like Jesus.
Consider ye and call for the mourning women, that they may come and send for cunning women, that they may come. And let them make haste and take up a wailing for us, that our eyes may run down with tears and our eyelids gush out with waters. For a voice of wailing is heard out of Zion, how are we spoiled? We are greatly confounded. 
because we have forsaken the land, because our dwellings has cashed us out. Verse 20. Yet hear a word, I mean, yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth, and teach your daughters wailing, and everyone here, I mean, everyone her neighbor, lamentation. Thank you. Good morning. First, I give one to God, who is the head of my life, my pastor, my first lady, missionaries, Edda Green, brothers and sisters here today. I count these as a privilege and an honor to read my poem to my first lady. So, here I go. I'm so grateful to have you in my life. I couldn't be more proud of you, my pastor's wife. You fill my life with laughter. I cherish the good times we share. You always take time to listen to me, and you always more than fair. You always offer a shoulder to cry on when I'm sad, down, and depressed. I just want to let you know that my whole life through, I'll be thanking God forever that my pastor's wife is you. The news that we received kind of through before Luke. But this is a tribute to our first lady. May I borrow from our theme on today a voice of a willing woman, Jeremiah 9 17 through 20. I won't preach, nor would I try to bring the message, but I will leave this to our elder Roscoe Nelson Green. God bless you. The prophet Jeremiah called for the morning women, the skilled women, and the wailing women. The woman of God is concerned over the souls of other people. She cries in despair and pain of lost souls. Have you ever heard her or seen her on Facebook and Zoom when she's praying and tears just streaming down her face? Have you seen that? We need bold women who has a battle cry before they die. She is a spirit-filled woman that the Lord has raised up himself to labor in fervent, fervent intercession for the city of Greenville, the universal church, and nations of the world. This woman of prayer is a symbol of survival. We need a brave and a bold woman like Hannah. Deborah and our modern day Naomi. She is always praying for somebody somewhere. She is involved in her community. She is a wife, mother, a grandmother, public teacher, and a constant praying warrior. Just call her. She will pray for you. She will pray with you and will pray about you. A praying woman is a wealthy woman. She prayed for me. All right, let's give them another hand. They want to do something in honor of First Lady on today is tradition had been done and let me just say as a husband since this pandemic has been going on she's been working even harder there's a lot that she's been doing behind the scenes and some things we had to do to take necessary precautions i think you understand that but since the choir has not been able to sing she's been very instrumental with the praise team teaching Sunday school she's doing a lot and I love the way she's teaching the youth department, the children, because we cannot leave our children out from Bible study. Say amen, everybody. Amen. And she has the ability to break it down on the level of children. And so we thank God for the first lady. Give her another hand. Give her another hand. <laughs> this is 
time, uh, they're going to come back yeah. again with singing. And I told you, we, we're working on a little handicap because two of the praise team members are not here today. The drummer is not here. Um, a young man stepped in for just a few minutes, yeah. but he had to go to Jerusalem Temple. That's his church. So that's why he's not here. So y'all clap your hands. Help us keep the beat. And you so used to have the drum beat. So clap your hands as they sing. All right. Come on, let's sing this love song to Jesus. Does anybody love Jesus today? Yeah. Now, I'm not asking you to sing to me, even though I, I loved everything that I just heard. I, you, I, I love hearing, I love you. But today, I'm not asking you to sing this song to me. I'm not asking you to sing this song to Pastor. But I'm asking you to sing this song to Jesus. The song simply says, I love you, Lord, today. Because you care for me in such a special way. So I'm going to ask you if you really love him today. And you, and you feel like standing to your feet. I, I don't want him to uh, be an imposition on, on our guests. But I'm going to ask the saints to stand to your feet and to sing. Put your mind on Jesus. Forget about everybody else. Everything else. And let's just sing this song to Jesus. Is that alright? Yeah. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today because you care for me in such a special way. That's why I praise you. I lift you up and I magnify your
my speaker for today, Elder Roscoe Green. Come on and say amen as he comes. Come on and say amen again. Amen. Come on and praise him. Come on, lift him up today. If you love the Lord today, if anybody love the Lord today, give him a praise. I don't know about you, but I come to pray. I come to magnify and to lift up the name of Jesus. How many of you love him on today? Come on, I wish I had some help in here today. How many of you really love the Lord on today? The Lord brought you out, hey amen, in spite of your situation and your circumstances. He's still God, and he's God all by himself. Amen. So I love that song that the choir, the praise team was leading. Just one more tune of that. I love you. I love you. I love you, Lord, today. If you love him, come on, help us today. Because you care for me. Yes. It's such a special Oh, he's moving in the room today. Will you praise the Lord today? I lift you up and I magnify your name. Lord, I thank you, Lord. Thank you. He's moving. That's why. That's it. I love you. Quietly, quietly. I love you, Lord, today. Oh, Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Because you care for me. In such a special way. That's why I praise you. I live. Come on, lift up a spirit of thanksgiving. A spirit of knowing that God is moving in this place. He's moving your lives. He's moving in your lives right now. He's moving on this side of the room. He's moving on this side of the room. Come on and just rain down, shout down glory. For God is so good. He's a magnifier. Lord, I love you today. We thank you and we praise you today. That's it. Come on and thank him. Come on and thank him. The more you praise God, the more that he will bless you. He will magnify. He will lift you up today. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you for all the things that you've done and the things we know you're yet going to do. Yes. God, we realize that you're God and you're God all by yourself. Yes. And there are some things we may not understand, Lord, but we thank you, Lord, for the things that you're doing and the things we know that you are moving in this place. You're so good, Lord. God, you're a wonder worker. We're thanking you. We come to praise. We come to lift and to magnify your holy name. There's none like you nowhere. God, we thank you. We thank you for those that are under the sound of my voice today, Lord. I pray that you would bless each and every one today, Lord. Give them glory. Give them blessings from on high, Lord. Stretch out your hand of glory, your hand of mercy today, Lord. Move in a special way, Lord, and we shall be blessed. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Let us all say, thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Amen and amen. You may have your seats on this morning. And I thank God for all of you that are assembled here today. We thank, give glory and honor to the Lord, our Savior. Amen. Thank God for this wonderful pastor on this morning. Or oh, you can help me. Come on. Amen. Amen. Thank God for the first lady. Amen. This is uh, her day on today. And we want you to help us. Amen. To bless her on today. Isn't that right? Amen. We want to give honor where honor is due. Amen. And this lady has labored. She has worked. Amen. In the vineyard. Amen. We thank God for her. I mean, there's a lot of things we can say about this great uh, evangelist, missionary, Valerie Elaine Fox Riley. Amen. On today. God bless you. But we're just so happy for her. Amen. She is a dear friend of mine. Amen. And, and I, I love the Lord because I, I can call him friend and I can call her friend. So we thank God for the things that, that she's doing. Amen. We know that she's very busy. Amen. In and around the church doing things that sometimes we don't even see. So we want to thank her. We want to thank her for the job that she's doing. We know we certainly can't pay her for what she's doing. Amen. Because she's a worker in the vineyard. Isn't that right? And amen. We see her, whatever she put in her hand to, we're seeing amen. It's flourishing. So we thank God for that. I know the pastor, amen, he must be happy, amen, and excited on this day. Amen. I, I, if I get one amen, I know I should get it over here. Amen. I know he must be happy, amen, and smiling, amen. So thank God, amen, for him. And I thank God for each and every one of you that are here on today, 
Amen. Thank God for all of these visitors that are in the house. Amen. Praise God. I don't want to leave anyone out. I see my, my niece. Amen. She was a, a faithful uh, visitor. And I see a member. Amen. And I'm so glad to see her and her husband and her family here on today. Thank God for each and every one of you that are here today. Amen. I'm just excited to be here today. And the praise team uh, started all over my message on today talking about praise. Amen. And I heard the pastor talking about it also. And I know that uh, this is a short program, so I won't uh, want to run a revival here on today. Amen. <laughs> Praise God. But uh, we want to get down to the meat of what we are what we're here for today. Amen. And we want to certainly bless this woman of God. Amen. And I want you to get it in your minds. Amen. Uh, you know, we want to try to reward her in some some type of manner. And I was talking to, amen, the uh, Sunday School Superintendent, Sherry, Sherry Lynn Fox, amen, on this morning. And I had a number in mind that I wanted to start this thing out with. And she said, uh, yes, yeah, a family thing. I said, I am the family. <laughs> amen, I am the family. But, but I just want you to know we want to bless her in a special way. And that's not my message on today. But I'm going to start this offering off before we get started with $300. And, Amen. Anyone that's want, want to join in with me, you can. Amen. And I don't want to spoil the message, but I just want to get something in your mind. You know, a lot of times when we go to work, we already have something in our mind what we're going to do. Am I right about it? There's always an agenda already prepared. So I just want to get in your minds and whatever you can do, I know she would be appreciative. But I want you to turn your minds, amen, to the, uh, to, to the Bible, amen, today. And I won't read the uh, first uh, First verse, amen, of the first chapter of Jeremiah, the ninth, uh, the ninth verse, 17 to the 20th chapter, because it's been written. It's been written and it's been read on a couple of occasions here on today. A wailing woman, and praise God, I mean, we have one right here in this house that's going to pray, that's going to go down before the Lord, and amen, is going to get something done. So we thank God for that, amen. But I want you to turn, I need a good reader today that will read for me First Samuel, the 18th chapter, verses 20 and 21. Amen. First Samuel 18, 20 and 21. I'm going to call on the uh, missionary, uh, Shara, uh, on today. Amen. She's turning. She's turning to the Bible right now. And, and let me just say one thing. If there's ever uh, a man, amen, that needed a wailing woman, it was David. Amen. David went through some calamities. He went through some difficult times in his life. There came a time, amen, when the people, amen, as good as he was, as many things that he had done, amen, the people talked about stoning David, amen. They, they wanted to destroy him. They wanted to get rid of him. Amen. Sometimes all of the good works and all of the labor you have done, regardless of what it would be, sometimes people will turn on you. And that's exactly what happened with this great leader, this great king, amen. They, they wanted to stone him. They wanted to get rid of him. But the Bible says that David just took a time and he just began to encourage himself. And every now and then, you have to just encourage yourself. Am I right about it? And sometimes things are not going exactly the way that you want them to do. And we don't want the first lady in the day to have to encourage herself. That's why we're here today to encourage her. But David said this came a time in his life that he just had to encourage himself. And I want you to know today that whatever is going on, whatever the situation may be, just begin to encourage yourself. Lift up a praise, amen, and just let it rain down on today. I know by now, amen, this missionary has the uh, word of the Lord. And would you begin reading for me, uh, missionary uh, Sharon? And Michael Saul's daughter loved David. Uh-huh. And they told Saul uh -huh. that the things pleased him. Yes. And Saul said, I will give him her, that she may be a snap to him. Uh-huh. And that the land of the Philistine may be against him. Yes. Wherefore, Saul said to David, Yes. Mm -hmm. one of mm -hmm. Praise God. In other words, uh, they would be as one. Isn't that right? And Saul so said, I will give him her that she may be a snare to him. Amen. It really wasn't trying to help uh, David and, and, and that the hands of the Philistine may be against him. Amen. He wanted to destroy this great man of God. Amen. And they say to him, don't worry, you're going to be my son-in-law. But he didn't mean it exactly the way that he, he expressed it. Amen. And then we, we actually went against his word. Oh, yeah. Amen. Praise God. And watch this. Michael was not the one that Saul was supposed to be given to David for his wife. Am I right about it? Amen. The Bible says that Miriam was the one that Saul had promised to give David. You know, it's a different thing, amen, if, if, if you've been promised one thing, amen, but you get delivered something else. 
Amen. Praise God. But God's not like that. Amen. But God promised you something. If God promises are uh, yay. Amen. If God says he's going to do it, you can believe that God's going to do that. But Morab was one that Saul had promised to give to David. And I believe that David sincerely down in his heart was expecting to get the prize jewel, amen, of the family. Amen. But sometimes it doesn't always work out that way. Sometimes you may just get the ugly duckling. Help me, Holy Ghost. You know, <laughs> Lord help us sometimes. It may be not exactly what you're looking for, but sometimes you just have to make do with what you have. Am I right about it? And, 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 and so Saul, I mean, had promised to give him to David, but when Saul learned that Michael loved David, he gave Merab to Adriel, uh, amen, who was a, the Meholotite, amen. The Bible makes it very clear that Micah loved David. So what made this young, beautiful daughter of the king fall in love with David? Because their background was totally opposite. You know, sometimes you will fall in love or something will happen, amen, and you may have totally different backgrounds. Help me hold the ghost. And sometimes opposite attracts. Have you ever heard that? Sometimes opposite attracts. And, and they had different backgrounds. And David came from a poor family, amen. And while Micah came from the wealthiest family in the land. And David came from an unknown family, amen. He may have been in a different town and a, in a different side of the track. While Micah came from more, the most well-known family in Israel. Amen. Help me, Holy Ghost. But in spite of their differences, the Bible says that Micah loved David. Amen. So, 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 Pastor, why did she love David? What makes him different from all of the other men of Israel? I mean, that's that's a very good question. There was something special about this young man. Amen. Even from his adult, from his childhood. Amen. There was something special about David. Somebody said there was something special about David. Mm -hmm. it can, coming from an unknown family, amen, Michael, amen, coming from one of the, the most prosperous family in the land. But in spite of that difference, the Bible said that she loved David. So why did she love David? Amen. What made him different from all of the other men? I'm glad you asked, preacher. The thing that made David different and the things that made Michael love about David was that he was a praiser and a worshiper. Amen. The one thing about it, amen, you got to be a praiser and a worshiper. Amen. God looks for, God loves his praise, amen. We need to be praisers. We need to begin to worship God, amen. When you come into the sanctuary, God is looking for somebody to be praising, amen. To lifting up and magnifying his name, amen. You know, praise, help me, Holy Ghost. Sometimes when we're out in the world, amen, we are praising, we are excited about so many things that are going on. But when we get in the church, sometimes we get quiet. This is, look at somebody say, this is not a quiet place. Uh -huh. When you think of praise and worship, if you know the Bible, you automatically think of David. There was no greater praiser, no greater worship in the Bible than David. David seemed to, to always be dancing and praising in God. David could get out, could get out of the bed and when, when the, regardless of what the time was, when he got out of the bed, he was up praising God. And God loves a praiser. God loves, amen, when you begin to lift up his name, amen, you begin to get in a circle, amen, and you begin to pull things together and begin to just send a praiser to the Lord. Because I heard one writer say that when praises go up, blessing comes down. And I don't know about you today, I'm looking for a blessing. Amen. And that's why I've always been a praiser. And I'm not going to allow the devil to steal my joy. And, and if I had a subject for this message today, it would be don't lose your praise. Look at somebody else and say, don't lose your praise. Uh -huh. And when you think of praise, amen, you know the Bible automatically thinks about David. David had a revelation of God, of God's grace and mercy. And that's why you would find him praising God even after he had committed, uh, amen, what we would call sin. Some people might ask uh, how David could praise God after going through all of those calamities. And you might see and you might watch people today who you know are not living, amen, anything. Amen. We always say not living anything, amen. And they come to church and they start praising God and you might wonder why are they praising God why are they so excited amen what do what do they have to praise God for because they're not living anything but I want you to know the truth is if a person amen sins and you they don't die in their sin they have a whole lot to praise God for 
Am I right? If they were would have died in their sin, they would be on their way to hell. But because of God's mercy and his grace, they are still here in among the land of the living. And I hope I got somebody's attention here today. Do you know that there is only one qualification to be a praiser? Somebody said, what's that preacher? And, and that is that you have to have breath. breath. The Bible says that, well, come on, help me somebody. What does it say? Everything that has breath, let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. And I don't care where you're at today and where you're sitting today. If you got breath, you got a right to lift up and to praise the name of the Lord. I got some help in here today. It doesn't matter what you're going through. And it doesn't matter what you have or what you may not have. You have a right to praise God. It doesn't matter, amen, how backslidden you may have felt, amen, or how backslidden you may be. You still have a right to praise the Lord. Because you have breath. Look at somebody say it's simply because you have breath. Uh, watch this. Several years ago, amen, when I was living in Chicago, amen, we was in a Friday night service, Pastor. And there was a, amen, praise God, there was a, a gentleman that walked into the church, amen. We were right in the middle of praise and worship, amen, and we were bringing the house down, amen. A great amount of church of God in Christ. I was working with the bishop then, and I remember there was a drunken man that staggered into the service, amen, late as we were getting ready to close out the service. And, and while the music was playing and everybody was excited, amen, we were praising God and singing those old testimony songs. That drunk man began to fall on the floor and he began to throw his arm in the air and, and cover his eyes, but he kept, he kept saying that the light was radiating from the pulpit. Somebody said, what was that preacher? radiating from the pulpit and, and so he kept telling them to come forth and, and Bishop kept saying no, the, the, the fellow kept saying that listen I can't come up there, amen, the light is too bright, I don't know what's going on amen, and he said but I believe that the power of God has fell upon me and he tried to get back up, amen and he started to shout and to praise God and, and what had happened, he was smelling he reeked up alcohol, pastor but listen, don't, don't let that destroy you, don't let that discourage you, amen, God can say anybody. Amen. God can save you. God can save me. God can deliver. Don't look at people now just because they have a, a calamity or they have a problem. God can bring them out. God can deliver them. None of us are where we were last week. Amen. I thank God for what he brought me out of. I thank you. Thank God for what he's done for you. God is a deliverer. Amen. I don't care what your circumstances are, what your situation are. God can deliver you out of whatever you're in today. Everybody wasn't always on top of the world, help me, Holy Ghost. I wasn't, oh, help me, oh, Lord, help us today. God can do it. Look at somebody said, God can do it. And that drunk pastor, amen, when we went back and we began to lay hands on him, Bishop came down, amen, from the pulpit, and we all circled around him, and we began, we began to pray, and we began to lay hands on him, and I want you to know that after about five minutes, amen, that man jumped up from the floor, he began to shout, he began to pray, amen, he out praised the praiser, amen, he out shouted the shouter, he out he outdid the, the, the choir members, amen, he was all over the place, and God delivered him all that night. He came in one way, but he went out in a different manner. Look at somebody and say, won't God do it? Mm -hmm. So God did it for the drunk. And I love what David said, amen, in, in Psalm 103. He said, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Somebody said, within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy disease. I don't care what come against you, amen, COVID, amen, the Delta variant. God can heal, amen, God can deliver, amen. You think that the doctors are doing it, but somebody gave the doctors the experience and the understanding of how to bring you out of this calamity. Somebody said, thank you, Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. God can do it. If God God can do it for him, amen. God can do the same thing for you. How much more should we as children of the most high God, who not only have breath, somebody said breath, but also have our name written in the Lamb Book of Life, who have been redeemed. I don't know about you today, but I've been redeemed. Delivered and set free from the powers of sin. How much more should we have a praise unto the Lord? We should be lifting up the name of God, lifting up the bloodstained banner, because God is is still in control. In spite of what's happening, God is yet in control. Somebody say he's in control. And 
watch this. We that have been saved, not only have our sin been forgiven, but we also have been given so many blessings to go along with salvation. <laughs> Help me, Lord. The Bible also talks about how we should bless the Lord because the daily, amen, the daily loads with his benefits. Amen. Yes, you and I have a right to praise the Lord. Everything that has breath should be praising the Lord. You should touch your neighbors and neighbor, praise the Lord. I have breath, amen. The Lord gave me breath. I didn't. I, ooh, help me, Holy Ghost. It didn't just happen haphazardly. God did it for you. God moved in your life. God woke you up this morning. Somebody said it wasn't the alarm clock. Mm -hmm. And when David disobeyed God and, and sinned according to the law, he should have been stoned. But get this. He would turn to God and repent, and then he would begin to praise and bless the name of the Lord. And when he couldn't get to the temple or when he couldn't get to the altar or to the priest because Saul had closed the temple and killed many of the priests, David would reach out in the dark of the night and, and grab a man a garment or something else that reminded him of God and began to praise and to worship God. He knew, amen, help me, Holy Ghost, that he could get God's attention. God, help me, Holy Ghost, if he could get God on his side and everything else would be right. All right. And I don't know about you today, but I know that God is on my side. God can deliver me out of the hands of the enemy. I don't care what traps have been set for me. I want to know that God is still in control. Somebody says he's in control tonight. Uh, and he knew as long as God was on his side that everything was going to be all right. Uh, and David, uh, get this, David was fervent in his worship and he was reckless in his praise. And I like that about David because amen, no matter who was in the building or what was going on, David would always praise the Lord. He wouldn't worry about who was watching or what was going on around him. He just began to praise the Lord. And when you begin to praise the Lord, you can get a breakthrough. Many of you need breakthrough today. God needs to remember Move some of those stumbling blocks that are coming before you. And I come to tell you today that God is the answer. God is the way. He is the truth and the light. Somebody say amen. amen. Uh, and you might say, what if I'm not in the spirit? I like when people say that because they, they have a misconception of what really is happening. You, you, you're not in the spirit. So why do you think that you have to be in the spirit to be a praiser? Are you in the spirit when you go to Walmart? <laughs> Help me, Holy Ghost. Are you in the spirit when you go to uh, Kroger? Say, man, you don't have to all necessarily be in the spirit to be a praiser. All you got to do is just have, somebody say, have breath. He said, have breath. Amen. And God gave us, amen, amen, gave us a spirit, amen, of praise. He gave us a spirit of worship. And that's what he's looking for us to do right here in this place on today. Somebody clap your hands for the Lord today. Mm -hmm. And having been in the ministry so many years, I've heard people say about other people, I don't think they're, they're in the spirit, uh, but who made them the judge? Uh, who are we to judge who is in the spirit or who is not in the spirit? Uh, and I come to learn uh, to keep my mouth shut and my hands off of other people's praise. Uh, I've seen people praise God in all kinds of manners. Uh, I would call in unusual ways. Uh, help me here, brother preacher. And I've seen people not only dance, uh, I've seen them leap, sing, and clap their hands. Are oh, you going to help me here today? I've seen some people run to the back of the pews, run around the church and climb benches and even jump over the pews. But I got news for you here today. The God that I serve, somebody know that he's able. He's able to bring you out of your calamities on the day. Have I got it with you here today? Are you going to pray with me? I'm sure that many people may not understand your praise, but they don't know what God has done for you today. They don't know what God has brought you out of. I haven't always had what I have now, but I want you to know that God has been good to me. The truth is, as I could never, 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 ever make it before, I know that God is the one that delivered me. God gave me what I have, and I'm not going to turn my back on the Lord today. I'm going to keep on praising him. I'm going to keep on lifting it in my butt. Say yeah. Say yeah. Watch this. 
not only was David a great praiser and a worshiper, he was also the greatest king that Israel had ever had. And to this day, Pastor, the tomb of David is sacred. It is God at 24 hours a day. Amen. Candles are con constantly burning as they honor this great man. And it's located on Mount, Mount Zion in Jerusalem. Somebody said Jerusalem. Jerusalem. And also, watch this, under this leadership of David, uh, pretty much like this pastor, a great leader. Amen. Israel possessed all the land that God had promised them. Uh, this had never happened before, nor had it ever happened since. Sometimes when you got good leadership, uh, amen, it puts you in a position to prosper. And I don't know about you today. I don't know if you're looking to prosper, but you need to prosper as your soul prosper. And God has a word for somebody here on today. Amen. You need to just praise him. You need to lift him up because the more you praise him, the more the blessings are going to flow. God's going to reach out his hand. He's going to bless somebody today. Somebody's getting blessed right now. Somebody's getting delivered right now, even in this world. I don't know you today, but God is going to do miraculous things. He's a miracle working God. And I'm going to close in a couple of minutes, amen. And also under this leadership, I want you to know that David, amen, did many, many great things. And what made great David such a great king? What made him the greatest king that Israel had ever known? It wasn't his intelligent level because his son Solomon was by far much wiser than David was. Am I right about it? And it wasn't his ability to be a mighty man of valor because he spent years of life, his life running in fear from King Saul. Am I right about it? And it wasn't his holiness because David had a sinful nature and fought many battles with lust. And it wasn't the virtue, amen, of, of him being a great father, frankly, because he, David was really a bad father. He really was not a good father. It wasn't his upright character because most of the time he had little or no characteristic traits. It wasn't his ability to hear the word of God because many times God wouldn't even speak to David. Those of you that are Bible scholars know that I'm right about it. And, and yes, there was something that made him different, Pastor. There was something that set him apart from all of the leaders of his day while other kings would pray and go to a prophet for a word from God during the times of trouble. David did more. David would go into a season of praise. And that's what I'm telling you today. You need to get yourself in a corner and get into a season of praise. That is what made David different than all of Israel, other kings and leaders. David knew how to praise God in spite of what he was going through. And throughout the book of Psalms, the heavenly Holy Ghost, you find that David not only praying, but he's also praising the Lord with all of his heart. In fact, David said seven times a day, I'm going to stop and give God some praise. Yep, help me, Holy Ghost. Then he decided seven times a day wasn't enough. So he decided that I'm going to praise the Lord in spite of my circumstances, in spite of my conditions. I'm going to praise him. I don't care what you're going through. So somebody just needs to give God some praise today. And in my closing today, I want you to know that the God that I serve, he's so able, he's able to make drunk men so wicked men wise. Have I got a witness today? If you're going down the road, the road of destruction, I stop by to let you know that the God that I serve today, he's a way maker. Make a way, way make a, he's a bridge over troubled water. Oh Lord, help me today, Lord. Jesus, thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on, give him a praise on today. Come on, give him a praise. Come on, give him a praise. Give him a noise of praise today. I want you today to never apologize, amen, because of your noisy praise. God loves your praise. Yeah, help me, Holy Ghost. He loved your praise. Praises have always been and always will be noisy. Also, amen, quit being afraid of offending somebody, especially when you shout praises to the Lord. Don't worry about anybody else. Amen. They're not going to save you. They're not going to help you. They're not going to deliver you. Only one person can do that, and that's the Lord Jesus today. Come on and give him a praise. Come on and give him a praise. Amen. My, my time is about up on today. Amen. But I thank God for all of you today. We're going to leave room and space for this pastor on today. Amen. And I want you to remember still yet, this is a very special day. We're honoring a very special woman. Somebody look this way and point your hands and say, God bless, God bless. This, great this great missionary. God bless, God bless. Evangelist, evangelist, missionary, missionary. Valerie, Valerie, Elaine, Elaine. 
Fox Riley. Get back in the hands of the pastor. Say amen as you come today. God bless you. Hallelujah. Glory, thank you, Lord. Oh, come on and shout hallelujah. Come on, you can, you can shout again hallelujah. The subject said, don't forget the praise. Don't forget to praise him. Amen. You may not have had the exact word, but don't forget your praise. I think it's the subject. Amen, amen. Did you, did you notice what he was saying? Really, he was saying that we have to all praise God at any time. Yeah. Does not matter what we're going through. Does not matter who we are. The scripture did say, let everything they have breath. Everything. Praise ye the Lord. I thought about the green when those disciples, yes, after sir. Jesus had gone back to heaven, yeah. and they had arrested them and they beat them. Yeah. That's right. But when they let them go, they came out shouting. My, and right. praising God. And you know what they said? They said they were really praising God just being worthy mm -hmm. to suffer shame for his name. Right. Hallelujah. I think about the man Job. Job chapter 1. Job lost everything. That's right. Lost all of his wealth. Every dime he really had lost it. And then on top of that lost all ten of his children in a tragedy of a windstorm. But the scripture said he fell on the ground and worship God. Yeah, that's right. Hallelujah. Why don't you just lift your head and shout hallelujah. 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 Somebody need to praise him right now. Hallelujah. I believe you can praise him. You'll be up there. I need you to help something down there that's troubling you. Lift your head and just shout hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah is the highest praise. Come on, it's to God. Lift your hand again and shout hallelujah. I can you tell it? Thank you. Come on, tell God, thank you. Lord, I thank you. Come on, I need to hear you. Come on, say, Lord, I thank you. In spite of what I'm facing, I thank you. In spite of how I feel, you're yet a good God. You're yet wonderful. And you deserve the praise because you are my God. You are the King. You are the Creator. Give them a praise, everybody. Come on, give them a praise. We're going to wrap it up. But come on, tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I wish we had time to really develop this thing. Because the Lord want to touch somebody right now. The Lord wants to heal somebody right now. And listen, there is a blessing in praise of God. It's true that when you pray, when praises go up, blessings come down. I want y'all to think about it in this manner. Uh, children, they have a way of doing things to kind of get stuff out of parents. Yeah. You let a child comes and they adore you and they talk about how good you are. You're the best dad. You're good. You know it's a snow job, but it still makes you feel good. <laughs> come on, y'all. And just let them keep on being persistent. Yes. And they know how to kind of, you know, how to work with you a little bit. Mm -hmm. Amen. And you find yourself doing something that you had not intended to do. That's right. We are God's children. Amen. The sheep of his pastor. What if we adore God and just lift him up and praise him? Oh, my, my, my. Are you all following what I'm saying here? Amen. Amen. I've told y'all this many times before, and, and we get ready to move on. But listen, I, I was watching Price is Right the other day. Go ahead. And when they call them folk now, <laughs> to come oh, down yeah. there just to be. Yes, sir. Don't, don't folk hollering, screaming, yeah, yeah. doing a dance sometimes. I saw right. one person doing a flip. Yes, sir. <laughs> and they had one nothing. That's right. Are y'all following what I'm saying? But let them come on there and win ten thousand dollars. Let them yeah. win. They cough. They cry. They jumping. They hollering. They're excited. Now, if they can be excited by a little money in a car, cannot I be excited about God who said his son to die for my sin? Cannot I be excited about the one who healed me when I'm sick? Who delivered me when I'm troubled? Amen. The one that's my way maker. Yeah, yeah I'm on the higher. Come on, lift those hands and say, Lord, I love you. And Lord, I praise you. 
Now clap your hands, everybody. Clap your hands. We enjoy the word of the Lord. All right, to those in charge, I don't know just how you want to do this. Come on, if y'all will, Sister Fox and Elder Green. Amen. God bless you. Now, what we've been doing, uh, are we going to allow the urge to come as, as we have? Since the pandemic, you know, we stopped March to give our offering. We stopped and we, we just put it in the bowl, trying to cut down contact and some other things. And so perhaps they want to say something first. And so you want to say something? Give us a direction. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, those of you who have given and those of you who plan to give. Uh, on today, several people have uh, given me an offering. But I do want to say I thank God for Sister Lee. Sister Lee gave me her money way back in March. Yeah. She gave me her envelope and said, here's my first Lady Day money. I just wanted to recognize that. So even though you know this time is coming, you don't have to wait until then. You know, we have a lot going on, and sometimes it seems like it comes back to back. And sometimes people, they complain about the church because they say they want us to give. But yet and still, every month, we got to give. We got to pay that light bill. Got to pay that water bill. Right. Got to pay right. that cell phone bill. I know. We still, yeah. none of that stops. So when it comes to us giving to the woman of God and the man of God, we do want to keep that in remembrance because that is the way we can be blessed. I do want her to know that I did not forget about her. I do have your uh, presentations that we normally give every year. They are in the car. Mr. Mary said on next week, I believe it is, you all have to go out to town or think something with the pastor or whatever. I want you to know inside of that suitcase is what you need. So take that and do what you need to do with it. And I want you all to enjoy yourself while you're there, even though you're there for medical reasons, but know that we'll be praying for you. So church, let's give and let's not hold back. 